Hello everybody, this is Budrich and this will be <coughs> like um, first impression video of uh, Light Excel. Even if it is a lie, this is not my first impression. It's uh, whatever you will see. And um, I have I, I tried out Light uh, extensively yesterday, uh, played around with it, and I have to say it's a very good text editor. I really like this text editor. I like it a lot. And uh, so I think I will open uh, Vivaldi here and then we can try to find it. Yeah, that's right. We can never find it on GitHub. Well, now it stores my closed tabs here. There's whatever this quick commands, which I like a lot with uh, Vivaldi. Uh, I don't want my history. Uh, being saved uh, over sessions, but somehow it stores the closed tab history in, in that quick commands thing. I have to look into that. Uh, it's not a big deal, but whatever. And now it actually saved us some time since we could open here Light Excel on GitHub. Um, okay. So this is where you get Light Excel. It's on GitHub here. It is like the the uh, only. It doesn't have a web page. Uh, it's also weird. It does have an icon, but they don't display the the logo or the icon, even if it is kind of nice. Uh, and I mentioned also that it is a fork of Light here. Um, they are very similar uh, at the moment, but uh, in my opinion, Light Excel seems superior now. Uh, recommend going to get started here. There, that is more or less the only documentation you got for it at the moment, uh, because this is a quite young editor, uh, and especially this fork, but even also the original Light is, is not, hasn't been around for that long. And it, it might look like it's lacking in the documentation uh, department, but it is it is so intuitive to use, uh, and it doesn't have that many uh, strange features. So this you this is enough to get you going uh, to use this, and you you should even be able to use it without looking at the documentation. But it's good to know where it is. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Get Light Excel. Yeah, then you, it just takes you to the release page here. So as you can see, it's available for bo both uh, Windows and Unix, I guess, uh, or Linux. Not sure if it works on on Mac, but I, I or I think it does because you can just build it. Uh, so we will install um, install this from AUR. Uh, I thought together. So, Light Excel. I think I showed you this in the last video that it have its own little, or maybe I didn't, but it is available on AUR and this is uh, kept up to date with, with the latest release, um, the package here. Not sure, uh, it is actually quite weird here that uh, the last commit, I have no idea what, what, what this is about because the last commit was nine days ago. The last release was five days ago. I don't know how that works. Maybe the release is created from a different branch or something here. I, I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the AUR package it uh, is this 1.15.3. So this might be a very rare uh, occasion where if you would build uh, the Git repository, you will get an older version than you would if you would install the released version here. But I, I try to always with AUR packages and stuff, I really don't like using uh, dash git packages that um, installs just the current state of the master branch of a project. Uh, I don't like that. I rather uh, stick to releases, uh, fixed releases like this, even if I am on Arch, but whatever. Okay, um, let's install it. Yay, 
S. Or let's remove it first because I have it installed. Uh, sudo pacman r as to r s light excel there and then we can see <laughs> it's not a big uh, we have this uh, dependency agg which is uh, i i think that agg is um, some kind of a, a font rendering library or graphics rendering library which is a this is a difference from uh, the normal light uh, it doesn't have this dependency, but it also have uh, not as good uh, font rendering as LightXL does. So this is one of the reasons uh, for for the fork. I believe that's the case. But as you can see, it's not a gigantic dependency. It's two megabytes, and LightXL itself installed is only uh, half a megabyte. So that's a good sign, right? Let's remove these guys. So I want to show you how to installing it. Um, how long it takes to build it and the whole experience, you know. So, yay, S light XL. And then I guess we do a clean build on this just so we can see how, how fast or slow it is to build it. Don't show the diffs. And it downloads the sources and now it builds. It I think it fir first builds uh, AGG. There, it's done with that, and now it builds Light uh, XL itself. While it does that, uh, we can go ahead here and make a backup of my uh, personal configuration uh, for Light XL here. So I will just rename this directory to something like Light XL BU, and this dot directory, by the way, is in my home directory. I have this symlink. Dot, it is actually just a dot config that I have sim linked to dot, so I don't need to sh uh, show hidden files because uh, nine out of ten uh, occasions when I show hidden files in my home directory, it's just to find dot config, so I sim linked it to dot, so then I don't have to do that, whatever. Okay, it's installed. Um, then you can either start it with the command light, run that. There, it started. This is how it looks like uh, by default. Uh, in the sidebar, I think, or let's restart it again because if you get some, th th this is also something to get used to, I guess. But uh, here, this information here is uh, kind of relevant. Uh, now it disappeared. I think we can also do this. When you get this triangle here, you can click that and then you get um, the log file. Well. Here they didn't display that error message, but the error message, it say that this project contains more than, I think more than 20,000 files, or maybe more, well, we can see it here, or more than 2,000 files. And when a project has more files than that, it will just stop uh, indexing uh, uh, files. So you will not like, if you accidentally open a directory with a million files, it, it will not freeze your system. You can set a limit for how many files a project can contain. And by default, it just opens the, uh, I think it opens the, the current directory you are in. So if we would go to dot here, for example, and execute light now. No, it always opens the home directory then, I guess, if you don't give it any any argument. Um, so this is now your project directory. And as you can see, some of them are just empty here because it never indexed them. So, so this might look and feel broken, but the, um, what I want to get to is that you shouldn't add like your home directory, which contains tens of thousands of files, maybe if you are like me, uh, instead uh, create multiple different projects and that is one of the benefits and one of the really good uh, features of light it's a very new feature but it is working and it is good enough to start using right away uh, so we can also see that it created light excel here the configuration uh, directory for us so now we have that and that's the old uh, backup of my old configuration so a good idea is probably to create a project immediately that's called light excel with, with that 
directory there and then you just give it that directory that you want to use as the uh, open project directory you give it as an arg argument like this i'm sorry this might be a bit confusing that i have uh, sublime open at the same time here but i do i also wonder what where vivaldi went maybe i chose that i don't know Okay, now we can see that we only have this uh, directory. It only has six files, uh, so that's a little bit easier for us. Um, and with six files, I guess it includes um, it includes the directories. It counts as a file here in this number that we see down here. This is where you can configure your light uh, Excel. Uh, specifically in this init Lua file. So uh, all configuration and all plugins are written in the Lua language. Uh, it uh, Most of the key bindings, the default key bindings from Sublime, the, it, if I would uh, give this some kind of a label, I would say this is very much a Sublime light. Uh, and I mean that in a very positive way. Uh, it reminds if you are a Sublime user, it will feel nice to, to use this one because many of the default key bindings are the same. It has the same layout. It has this command palette on Control Shift P. I guess that's very uh, good to know. Uh, and it's also something when you first start Sublime or Light Excel, you can see a little screen where it tells you that you can press Control Shift P, for example, to, to uh, browse all available commands well actually it doesn't display all commands this is a bit weird uh, actually because if you would do this in sublime then uh, it would list all literally all com available commands if you don't uh, enter any filter whatsoever but here it just lists a fixed number like this but i know there are more uh, commands like here you can see tree view toggle for example that hides the sidebar uh, it also seems like it doesn't you see tree view toggle uh, in sublime uh, that would be stored at the top of the list if i'm not mistaken the last commands you execute and stuff like that but i think that are uh, things that are coming to this uh, one of the things i like to do here first and foremost is make this uh, enable this summer theme the light theme you can see in this grayed out comment here <clears throat> but as you can see nothing happens so for this to take effect we have to reload light or you can do this and this is also something i think they should uh, fix actually if you search for user in this uh, um, command palette uh, and then yeah no, I didn't say what it said, uh, but open user module. And this is this init.lua in your configuration file. That is your user module. So now it just opened the same file. It didn't even open a new tab or anything. But if I save this now, now it have like auto reload uh, uh, configurations and stuff. When you, Whenever you save this file, it will uh, apply the settings you, you have changed there. But you have to use that uh, configure or open user module thing for that to work, as it is now. Um, and then, um, but these are the user configurations. Uh, Lite also have uh, like system-wide default configurations. Uh, <clears throat> we can go ahead and add that directory uh, by doing uh, so I, I search here for directory and then I select core add directory and here we can navigate to, to around the file system so I will go to USR share light Excel and you can use tab completion and you also get a preview of the available uh, directory so this is blazing fast and, and really smooth i really like this uh, way of, of opening and navigating files within the editor very good there now we added this one um, and as you can see it have like the same structure uh, almost uh, but here we can see those color schemes for example 
we have fall and we have summer and they look like this and this is how simple uh, a, a theme or a color uh, scheme is, is declared uh, and this uh, applies here we can see the syntax colors very easy to configure this uh, yourself uh, for like normal text symbols comments keywords strings numbers you see very very uh, simple intuitive uh, way of doing that and this stuff that is the ui itself um, and the background of the text document is part of the ui so that's not part of the syntax uh, uh, declaration here i guess okay um but very super easy to to configure these and add your own uh, i think we will do that in this video even soon uh, but uh, we only have two installed by default and everything is Lua files. So you can also program in these. Uh, uh, you can write Lua code here, so to speak, uh, in the configuration files. Uh, so if we wanted to use fall again, we just change the fall there. So this actually doesn't look like that default color scheme, does it? I'll uncomment this. Huh. Okay, so there is like a, a, a built-in color scheme that you cannot choose that is applied when you uncomment this. I didn't know that, but that's how it is. That's a bit weird. Uh, I think that default color schemes should be here, uh, maybe. But uh, the way light works is that these system configuration files, none of them are uh, mandatory you can delete all, all, all this and then you don't have any because you got a some built-in uh, plugins here for example autocomplete is a plugin that you can uh, configure yourself by modifying this I, I am not 100% sure about all, all of this and most or many plugins have their own little key map usually at the end of, of that file here so here we can see for uh, Autocomplete, it, it have mapped these uh, key bindings. Um, that can be good to know, especially when you install uh, third-party plugins. All of these are, are things that might change. Uh, this is the auto-reload used to, uh, yeah, auto-reload, I guess, with the init there. And you see, and you have some, some uh, language uh, definitions here. Here is the C language. Uh, defined in 60 lines uh, so it's a very simple uh, syntax definition if you compare this to the uh, definition of a C, the C language in a sublime pack you will see that it is a lot more com complicated with that said I'm not sure how good or bad or anything this is I, I don't care so much uh, about these syntaxes because uh, I'm just uh, glad if I can uh, recognize a comment and change the, the colors based on that. Because here you see, here, here you, you declare how a comment look in, in C. Uh, I'm not sure how this works uh, actually. Exactly what, how, uh, the, yeah, the syntax for the syntax declaration is here. But I don't think it's a, a, a impossible thing to, to figure out how it works. And then you, you declare what type it is, and that type in turn is uh, what the colors will apply to. So comment, then you get that comment, that color, and blah, 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 you see. Uh, but these are built-in plugins. It also have, for some reason, uh, fonts here. Three different fonts. It have uh, some kind of a normal font, and that is the UI font here. Then it have icons, which is of course the icon font here, and it have monospace font. Uh, so if you want to change font, then uh, you go to the the init Lua. We have this uh, thing here called customize fonts. You can uncomment comment these guys. And there are four different types of fonts you can uh, enter here in the config file. So dot font user interface. What I like to use uh, for that is um, let's do this. Is actually go mono just as I have in Sublime. I think it's 
it's such a good uh, font. You will see here that this will not work. It doesn't change the Go Mono. You need to, as it is now at least, uh, specify the full path to Go Mono. I'm not sure if this works. No, you have to specify the full path to the font. And I have this FC list uh, command installed. I think that's like you get you have that if you have fonts on on X11, you know. And then you can just grab for go here or something. And we should see there it is. Go mono dot ttf. That is uh, the path I want to use, and then you add that here. Ah, you see now it changed this font, the UI font. I actually wanted to change uh, the code font to uh, this, so change that instead. Now we have Go Mono as my coding font, but I want a much larger font. I want about uh, 20 here. And to be fair, I, I'm not 100% sure what this scale and the 20 here really means. If it is points or pixels, I think it feels like the, the, this 20 is smaller than Sublime 20. Uh, but whatever, just find your, your, your size here. I will also show you how to, because at the moment I don't think we can, if I hold control and scroll here now, it doesn't do anything. But there is a plugin, a third-party plugin we can install to, to be able to change uh, 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 font size on the fly. And we will soon do that. For uh, the UI font, I would actually like the same font as I have everywhere for my UI. This uh, customized fixed sys font that I have. have. Uh, so we just search for fixed sys here. grep for fixed sys and then we can see this one fixed fixed sys which is my personal uh, 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 customized version of uh, fixed sys excelsior so you probably don't have that font but i do enable that it will look super weird now because my fixed sys Fixed, fixed sys. It uh, it only works in one uh, font size. You see, all my fixed sys stuff here. It is always in the same uh, font size, and if it's not displayed in that exact size, it doesn't work. Uh, and that size all is also weird here. I think it's 19. Yes, that looks fine, but it uh, looks a bit too smooth. Um, but if we scroll down here, we can see that we have some font options you can give it as a third argument here for the font setting you do that like this you can paste that if we save this i think it will break completely it does because some it's something with this hinting that uh, 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 this hinting option doesn't work with this font at all i don't know what, what what's going on even none here doesn't work so you have to remove this this at least for this font I know it's a weird example. Uh, and then we have grayscale anti-aliasing or sub-pixel anti-aliasing. I don't remember which one it is that looks the best. Oh, it's definitely grayscale. There, this is how I like it to, to look. And yeah, already some good customizations here. Uh, Key bindings, the default key bindings, you can find them here in the core core uh, uh, directory here, the system wide. And this is actually, this core, it contains most of the functionality of the editor is uh, defined here in these Lua files. Uh, because Lua, the biggest advantage I guess with Lua is that it have an incredibly fast uh, just-in-time compilation, meaning that you can write uh, scripts, Lua scripts, and have them embedded into an application without compiling the Lua, uh, it, because it's so 
so fast. So it's almost it's almost as fast as having a compiled program uh, running Lua scripts like this. Uh, what it means is that the, 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 most of the uh, editor is not a compiled program. It consists of these Lua modules or Lua scripts here that you can modify and overwrite and, and stuff like that. I don't know how advanced we'll get into this, but if you look into the key map, this is uh, the default uh, um, key bindings are declared here. I think they are. Yeah, here they are. It's nothing more than these. And most of them are like normal stuff, but I really like that it has some of my uh, favorite features like control slash is total comment, uh, control uh, arrow key up, arrow key down is moving lines up and down. I really like this feature. I use it all the time in Sublime. Um, and you can join, uh, uh, join lines and stuff like that. Was it anything more? Mm. I will change a couple of these to my own likings, but I I don't really miss any features here uh, or uh, or commands. Um, we can also look here how they are declared, or let's add uh, our own uh, uh, key binding for for a thing that I would like to add. Let's just take something here. Uh, we can take this doc toggle line comment here and there is also uh, in the wiki in the documentation on, on uh, github it is a more detailed explanation on, on uh, how you can use this so if we go back to our init lua here there is a, a example commented out key binding here control escape to quit and it uh, tells you that you should de uh, declare your uh, user key bindings like like this with keymap dot add and then this and you paste one of these and you close it. And now we have toggle comments here with control control slash. If we wanted control alt plus slash, we can now do. It works, it works. Nice. Uh, but what I would like to add is uh, a key binding to toggle the, the, the sidebar here. And the sidebar is called the tree view. And it's very uh, intuitive and easy to do this. Uh, you bring up the command palette, and then you search here for tree view, for example. And now there we see tree view colon toggle. You see? And it even tells us here, we can even copy this command here because this is actually a command. Yeah, that's a command I want. And we can see the syntax here is doc colon toggle line comments. It's the same syntax for this, you know, so tree view uh, colon toggle. I'm not sure if this works exactly here. Now we, uh, I, I, I want to try it, see if it works. Control alt slash. No, I'm still having uh, that toggle comment thing there. Uh, so I think you need to make this lowercase and remove the white space there. And now I think it works. Yeah, now I can control alt slash to hide that, but I actually want it on control alt s. Great, one thing that it doesn't have here for some reason is that you cannot resize the, the sidebar at all. You cannot drag it and you cannot expand it or anything here, but I, I guess that's something that's coming. And that is also something that have uh, I have been annoyed with in Sublime. You can, of course, change the sidebar here in Sublime like this by dragging it and you can double click it to make it uh, as small as possible, but still fitting all information in the sidebar. That's great. And you can toggle it here as well. Uh, but what you cannot do is change uh, the, the size of the sidebar. You cannot do it programmatically, uh, so to speak. Because I would like a, a key binding to, to just like have so I could have like two fixed sizes, like one that looks like this and then maybe one that looks like this in, just so I can when I just want to focus on this and, and be sure that everything fits and then I can quickly press a key binding to have it really small if I would like that. But there's no way to, to do that in Sublime uh, without hacking the source code, which is closed. So we cannot do that. 
but that is fully possible to do that here in in uh, in light and this sidebar it's just a plugin in in the it's not even part of the core modules it is one of the plugins here it's the tree view plugin here so this is the whole sidebar code and all of these plugins they are so neat uh, small code it's very you see 263 well here we can see that it actually have a default key binding also control backslash i guess i didn't even know this it's a bit confusing here uh, at the moment uh, uh, to find all the key bindings since they are included in in the files like this so i guess control backslash also works but if we wanted to find all key map add uh, files in this project, we could do Control Shift F, and then find text in project, and then let's search for key map add. You see how fast that was now. Uh, even if this is a very small project, actually, it's just it, it's not many projects at all, but it did it li lists now everywhere uh, that key map add exists in in uh, this project. First, we see, see here line.lua, and this is uh, in, in our user configuration. Uh, we have something in core init lua. Uh, that looks like the default configuration to me. Yeah, this is, this is where the default configuration, uh, it writes this, uh, this stuff here, write user init file. This is where it does that. Cool. Didn't even know about that. Um, then we have key map Lua, which we looked at. Uh, autocomplete, we looked at that as well. Macros, I don't know what that is. Yeah, control shift semicolon, macro toggle record. So these are like uh, semi hidden uh, key bindings or key mappings, but as you can see, it's very easy to find them. Quoting, you can press control single quote to quote something. I don't know, control single quote. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, Reflow, Control Shift Q. I'm not sure what Reflow is actually. Control Shift Q. Uh, brought me down here. I don't. I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, or what happened there really? Did it fold this in a weird way there? I think it did. Uh, I, I, I'm not really sure what this is doing. Um, whatever. And the tree view itself here. So these are just locations now. But you will see when you install uh, uh, third-party plugins that uh, they also, also often have their custom key bindings. What you could do is uh, copy every key binding like this into your init uh, Lua file. It doesn't matter, I think, if you de declare the same key binding here, just to get a better overview. And these will always have a priority. And you could either do it like, um, yeah, if you want to add this key map add, this is also good because here it looks like looks a bit different. Um, we just add that stuff here. And now you see we have two key map adds here. But uh, you can also add all key bindings inside the same key map add if you wanted to. Just add them like this. Here we can also see it does, doesn't automatically uh, auto indent when you, uh, in many text editors. When I press enter here, it would automatically indent to this location, like two spaces or whatever here, but here it doesn't. But that is also available as a plugin. But the, these two, th this works as well. And then you can add as many uh, uh, of these as you want here. Also find this syntax very easy to, to read and understand. You get a good overview. And also white space is not important here. So you can do things like this. To make it look even neater. So, and I think I will do this. I will add all the key bindings uh, in this file. You could even do this if you want to do. You could create a new file. Um, if we do uh, control command palette here. Um, even if I, I'm not a super big fan of this way of creating a new uh, file. So you search here for new doc. It's also like the, the language, the lingo is a bit all over the place. Like, 
doc is a weird uh, name for a file. I don't know why they call it that. Then uh, it is also sometimes a bit in inconsistent uh, if, when they are calling it uh, a directory and a folder. It's called both of those things mixed up. And I, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, now we created a new file here, but we, that means we just get a, a dummy file that uh, doesn't exist anywhere. It's like exists in memory, kind of. Uh, what I want to do in this file, I wonder if I can drag and... No, I cannot reorder the tabs here, at least not by dragging. So that's the thing, because we, we have a lot of files open here now. I don't like that uh, personally. I, uh, in, in Sublime, I have a plugin that limits my, my tab count to uh, 10 or 5 or something like that. But what I wanted to do is... Um, adding these guys and then we also need I guess uh, this key map we do this and then we press control save now and then we can save it in our uh, user directory and here th this is also awkward that in almost everywhere Tilde is uh, understood as the home directory, but when you save a file, it isn't. So you have to write the absolute path here. I almost forgot. Uh, but you can see that it's working when you get this uh, 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 help here from with available directories. But I, I know that the, that that's a thing uh, that will get fixed. Uh, light Excel, and then we save it as key key bindings. Dot Lua. Now we have a Lua file in here, and this Lua file is not automatically uh, loaded. Init Lua, that is automatically loaded, and everything in your plugins directory is automatically loaded, but th this one isn't. This is a special file, sessions, it remembers like the state of the editor and stuff like that. But what we can do now is uh, like the color scheme here. It have this core dot reload module and then colors dot summer. It means that it will look in uh, colors uh, first in in your uh, user settings here for colors because this is actually the directory name and then it will look for a Lua file named summer. Doesn't find one here. Then it tries the system directory colors finds summer. It's a Lua file. Loads that. So if I wanted to load this keybindings.lua file, we could just uh, add that like, like this. Keybindings. Uh, this is also me freestyling here now. I, <laughs> uh, but I think this should work. We save here. And now, um, yeah, let's test uh, toggling this. It still works. If I change this now to control Alt D instead. Nothing happens when I press that, but when I press Control Alt S, it works because I have I still have to even if I change this file, it doesn't automatically reload all the settings. I have to uh, trigger the reload from here, so I save here. And now, if I press Control Alt S, it still does this. It's this is also interesting uh, that it doesn't. I should also test Control Alt D. Yeah. Now that these key bindings works, but the old key bindings, when you change a key binding, uh, it doesn't like uh, remove the old one. Uh, I guess at least not when there's no default uh, um, key binding declared for it, something like that. Um, but the nice thing now is that now I could add all, why not just do that when I um, add it here? I think it's a good idea. We can add all, all the default key bindings here. Maybe that makes uh, the startup like uh, one millisecond slower, but who cares? Because then I can have an easy overview of it. There. Now we have all key bindings in one place. And then I could, of course, also look at the find results uh, to, to get the, the rest of them, you know. Uh, yeah, this tab management uh, is also something that could uh, could be improved, in my opinion. 
if we want to modify the color scheme, it's extremely easy, you know. I like to do this. I copy this color scheme and then we create a new file again. Uh, new doc. Uh, paste this guy. Control S. Absolute path. Big uh, light XL colors and then we can call it bud.lua now we should have that here there it is it took some time for it to, to enter here but it's there um, and just to see that it works we could change uh, the background here or to uh, some annoying magenta color here we just you see there are three backgrounds and I think one is the document, one is the UI here and one is another one. I don't know if it is, I, I don't know which one it is, but it's easy to figure out. Now we can just change here colors uh, dot bud. I think it worked, maybe. Yeah, there, now it worked. Uh, uh, I have no idea what, what this background one. Uh, you see, there are three different background uh, keys here. Same thing here, we have to reload this guy for it to work. And it only works because we have this reload module thing also. I think there is a, uh, if we go here, and I wonder what redo is. Yeah, and this is great. You can see the key bindings here. So control Y, that is redo. So I'll save this, and then I think there is a reload. I haven't tried this actually. Core reload module. Uh, yeah, let's try that. I don't know. Ah, okay. So then we can reload any module here. We want to reload the user module, I guess, then. Or maybe plugins project search. No, this is not it. Um, I wonder if the, it's called restart then. Okay, core restart. Ah, okay, and then it uh, restarts the whole editor. This is another thing I really don't like. <laughs> oh, look at this uh, Windows uh, 95 flashback. Nice. Uh, this is the only pop-up I have seen and it is uh, prompting me about unsaved documents. Uh, this, uh, this is one thing that is uh, at the moment a lot better in Sublime because Sublime it doesn't care if a, uh, if a document isn't saved. That, to Sublime that just means it isn't saved to disk. But Sublime keeps uh, a cache of everything that's open in some magical way. So even if you don't save a file, close the editor, open it again, it just brings up uh, the document wherever you left it and it is still unsaved, meaning it the, the changes aren't applied to the file on disk that you have changed, but the, yeah, you see what I mean. Uh, and that also means that you never have to see pop-ups and stuff like this. Uh, and in my opinion, in this light Excel, I wish this prompt here would be uh, like a prompt like here instead. So you could change this from a menu. I really don't like pop-up windows. And <laughs> even if I, I, I kind of like this uh, Windows 95 uh, effect here that you can get. You have to dra drag it fast enough to get the, the, the lines, but there I click no, at least we got rid of that. So that's the thing, saving files, you have to do that. There's no auto save uh, because that's another, uh, I think I enabled it with a setting in my Sublime config to automatically save every file also. Whenever I, it, it, I change focus, e either if I change focus to a different program, then it would automatically save this file. Or if I just change tab, it also automatically save the last one. I have found that, that that works really well for me. Um, but here you have to keep track of that and it is uh, quite 
it's also not indicated indicated well at all here in the tab bar which files are uh, unsaved. This one is not saved because we got an asterisk in the title here. You can see the window title here as well. We get back to this because this is another thing that I uh, seriously have to fix. So it's the key bindings. It's not saved. Uh, so now we have to search here. What file is not saved? I, I don't even know. There was something keymap Lua. Okay, I don't wanna. Ah, because we moved stuff around there. Press Ctrl C a couple of times so it's uh, untouched. Here is uh, the tree view stuff here. Whatever. Uh, the best way to reload settings is to just save this init Lua uh, file and make sure that you have opened it as a user module. Uh, I wonder if there is a command to close other tabs. That would be close, no. No, there isn't. But all, all, all of these things that I'm missing here. I know that I can easily uh, implement them myself, uh, writing some Lua uh, uh, plugins here. Uh, and I really mean that because it's very easy. Uh, you will see, Let's maybe we should install a, a plugin. Let's write our own color scheme here. Uh, and when one plugin that's available for most text editors is a way to uh, display what uh, color this uh, uh, 24-bit hex number is representing. So let's open, I don't know why I closed uh, Vivaldi, but let's go to LightXL's uh, GitHub. Um, scroll down a bit and then we can see get plugins here. Um, and here is a list of plugins. Color preview, screenshot, there is no package manager or anything at the moment, but it's very easy to install plugins. Uh, but uh, that's also something that would be kind of cool and not that difficult to write a little package manager for this. Uh, but here, this is exactly what I want, highlighting uh, colors like that. Then I click on color preview here. And what that does, uh, if you look at the status bar, the address there, there it just takes me to a raw uh, Lua file uh, in this Git repository. Uh, to be exact, one of these. So color preview dot Lua is a file here. We open that. It looks like this. So what we want to do is uh, save this file. You can do that by doing this. I, I I'm doing this now the normal person way. Of course, I'm using Linkins for this otherwise. But save link as, uh, and then we want to save it. Uh, in light excel configuration in dot config you just save it to plugins make sure that it is named uh, dot lua also uh, I, I i cannot uh, uh, i dislike gtk so much why why have they moved cancel and saved to the top here uh, I guess this wouldn't look as stupid if I was using a normal desktop environment and window decorations and stuff like that. But still, why have you moved it to the top? And why do you have cancel at one corner and save at a different? It have been at the bottom right corner for like uh, four decades. And then just... <sighs> Idiots. There, now I saved it and now we should have it here color preview plugin and and this which you might ex would expect is quite, kind of an advanced uh, uh, feature it's just this it's 53 lines of code here and and it's not impossible to understand and this is actually quite a uh, you know it's a lot of math uh, when you uh, transform uh, hexadecimal into colors and stuff like that but still it's really cool um, now you have to reload this uh, for this uh, uh, new plugin to to have effect. What you um, or you could either do that or you could load it with a, a core reload module here. Um, 
I think. Well, if we added that here at least, that would work. Not sure if it works here. Uh, color. No, because it isn't aware of this uh, uh, plugin here now. So the best thing is to uh, restart the editor. Uh, we can, of course, also, because uh, if you have a desktop environment or something, or a good launcher menu, I'm using Whisker menu, then um, it should be available here as Light Excel for you. It should probably work with Rofi and stuff as well. And now that plugin should have effect here. So if we open Bud, now we can see that all, all our colors are highlighted with the correct uh, uh, color like this. Uh, and uh, a typical uh, Bud Lab color scheme, it looks something like this. Take this normal text color, that's great. And then we apply that to everything except comments and then we have a great color scheme. Strings are black, operators are black, functions are black, but comments are green. Save that. Save this. Ah, and now you see, we had this open, we saved, it didn't update anything because we haven't uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, this is a bit annoying, but you have to be sure that you have opened the user module with the, this core open user module command. Now save there. Bud lab color scheme. Only comments are green and text is black, background is light. That's great. Um, yeah, we don't have to install a bunch. I, I, I can show you which plugins I, I have uh, shoes on myself. Um, there are some really weird ones here. Shows the current time and date in a view in a large text. So if you install this, then you can have a tab that displays a very large clock like this. Uh, I guess that just shows uh, what the kind of stuff you can do here with this uh, UI uh, library and, and Lua and stuff. Uh, I was also thinking that it would be kind of cool to write, uh, you know, my, my touch typing program, typist here that I have. Maybe that wouldn't be uh, impossible to do something like that in the text editor here. But uh, instead of having this, you operate on, on uh, like a grayed out file. So you cannot edit the file, instead you just, yeah, you get it. Touch type on an actual file open in the editor. And maybe even with every key bindings and everything works, you just have like a template on what you're supposed to write and so, or something. I, I was thinking maybe that is possible. I have no idea. But when I saw this big clock, I thought it's probably is. Um, black, if you use Python formatter, probably a good idea. I use this bracket match. It, un it just underlines uh, matching brackets and parentheses and stuff like this. It, it, it works for both, both parentheses. Uh, uh, curly braces and brackets, uh, as far as I know. And I, I, I think that's a, a, a nice uh, low key uh, way of, of uh, showing you what's going on, you know. So the cursor is here, this bracket is in contact with the uh, cursor, then it highlights uh, what bracket belongs to it, so to speak. And this is actually quite useful when you have like nested parentheses and brackets and stuff. It, 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 it can save you uh, some some confusion. Uh, so I use that. Center doc. I actually installed this, but it didn't work. Uh, so, but this centers document. I have it in Sublime. You can see the code is centered here in the view. It's not lined to the left, and it centers itself based on the length of the line. But it doesn't seem to work in in Light Excel uh, at the moment. This center doc. I think you have to uh, manipulate this this. Uh, uh, module a bit, but uh, yeah, you can see it's not I, I, I can figure it out if I really need that. It's nothing important color preview We just installed console. I haven't even tried. I will not do that uh, copy file location, whatever uh, Detect indent. This is good. You know that this automatically detect when you open a file you, it, it automatically see if you want to use tabs or spaces uh, How large the space the tabs are and stuff like that. So that that is something that I think is a good thing to have installed, uh, especially when you are uh, contributing to different projects and stuff to make sure that you don't add your own stupid uh, intendation style when it's not the, the projects and 
stuff like that. It's a good plug plugin, I guess. Um, end of new file, uh, new line, end of file, new line. I use this. It always adds a blank line to the end of a file. I have noticed that that's a good thing to do. Um, git status displays the git branch uh, in in the status bar. I use that because I, I find that useful as well to see what branch uh, I have, I am working on. I, yeah, I, I really like that little feature, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we might get back to that uh, and or maybe not because I shouldn't talk about things I don't fully understand like that. Indent guide, it's these things, you know, so you get lines uh, showing how far the indentation is. I don't use it, but some people really like it. Then you got a bunch of syntax definitions here for a bunch of uh, languages. Not that interested to me. Last project opens the last project. If you don't uh, use any arguments, I use this. I I guess it's good. I'm not sure that you need this now because this project management stuff that is very recently added to Light Excel here. And I know that he added a bunch of plugins are now, now uh, built in to the core of, of uh, Light Excel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, automatic. Yeah, this one is, is what inserts intendation automatically, what I was talking about there. So when you press enter, uh, or new line, then it automatically indents to uh, hopefully the correct intendation. Uh, and that is something I'm just used to from my workflow in Sublime. And I think a lot of other uh, people are used to this functionality. If you aren't, then it is probably weird, but if you like it, then it's probably good. Line guide, I use this. I think this is a good idea. It's very hard here to see what it is since the screen. But what this does is it, it just display a line uh, at this, uh, at wherever your you want this. So I, I, I usually have this in Sublime. I think I have it at 50 columns here. Uh, some many people have them at 80, but whatever. It, it, it's just a visual guide to see to, to help you not writing too long lines. And that's a good thing in my opinion. Uh, this one, motion trail, this is also one of these showcase ones. You can see you get this uh, Ninja cursor if you use this. Uh, you get some weird animations on the cursor when you move it around. Also shows that you can do some really crazy stuff with this uh, uh, editor if, if you would like to. Uh, I have no idea, I haven't tried it. Maybe it's cool to use it, I don't think so. Uh, open the parent directory of the current file in the file manager. I kind of want this feature, but I also uh, would like to implement it exactly as I have done in, in Sublime through uh, uh, a bunch of a series of weird uh, shell script hacks instead, but whatever. Um, open selected file name or URL. I think this is interesting. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but it's really good if I can select a URL in a text document and then it automatically opens that in the browser or uh, opens the file, but then I want it to open itself in, in the editor itself, I guess. Project manager. I don't think you need this at all. It just works now uh, in, in Light Excel. Rainbow parent. Parent. I guess this is like that bracket highlighter, but instead it changes the colors of the uh, uh, brackets. I don't like that, but some people do. Scale, you need this plugin to be able to change the font size, as I mentioned. So maybe we should install that as well. And then you can also install scale, scale status to display how large uh, the, the fonts are. Or let's not install them, but you just hold control page up or uh, or control scroll or control plus uh, minus to, to change. Uh, spell check, you can do things like that. Um, these uh, uh, plugins here with an asterisk, when you go to them, you will see that they will not take you to a source file. Instead, they take you to a repository because these are like, uh, ex yeah, they are located in, in their own repository like this. This one is really cool, uh, but I haven't really tried it, but it looks uh, damn cool. Actually, it, it adds uh, another side panel like this that displays uh, uh, 
uh, you can add tags to your documents for example to do fix whenever you write this in your code it will automatically um, get reg registered by this plugin and then it gets listed in this tree view so here you can see all the to do's here oh, damn it. here you can see it lists uh, all to do so and I guess when you click on this it will take you to that file to the line in that file where this uh, tag is entered uh, I, that looks like a really neat uh, thing and I will definitely try it out but I cannot really say that it is amazing since I haven't tried it but I think it is yeah and that is all the plugins that currently exist uh, for it at least here in this official plugin repository. You see, it's a very <laughs> small little project, um, but it's, uh, and it might look like light here. Who uses that? Or does it really have any users? But I actually think it does have more users than, than um, uh, you might expect. Can I go back to the main repository, please? There. So light excel it only have 72 two stars uh i have no idea how many users it has uh i don't think it have that many i i don't know but there were a lot of comments on the aur uh, even if they were all from the same user but i think there are uh let's say a hundred users i don't know that's not that's not a lot but if you look at uh, vanilla light here it actually have 5000 stars this was actually 5.8 yesterday, so now it's 5.9. I think this is much larger, especially in the Lua uh, community, than, than we outsiders might uh, expect. Uh, and I definitely don't see this is a, as a dying and not future-proof project. It is not the most future-proof project, but I... I, I think it will be use, usable for 10 years and maybe even more so since it have its own UI library and stuff. It, it isn't dependent on whatever crazy IDs the GTK developers uh, uh, will have and stuff like that. Uh, so it can be just as Sublime and Sublime has barely updated its UI in 10 years, you know, uh, and it's still great. Could be better if it were open source, so I could fix these weird things that I am annoyed by, but whatever. Let's not talk about Sublime anymore, I don't want to do that. Feels really good to change text editor here, uh, but I haven't told you about uh, some of the more um, annoying things here with lights, uh, which I kind of don't want to do, but uh, one very uh, obvious one is that it doesn't have multiple cursors it's only one cursor and I already feel a little bit I miss multiple cursors I thought it wouldn't be super important but I think I will constantly uh, feel miss them and multiple cursors is not something that is just simply implemented with a 50 line uh, uh, plugin but I don't think it is impossible to implement it uh, not impossible at all and maybe not even that difficult it will take some time and it is one of those features that if you would implement that it, you, you constantly need to, to make sure that that is working with everything else that is implemented blah 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 it's a it's a weird one you know uh, and um, if this had multiple cursors, I think I would just switch uh, right away and, and decide on this. But um, since it doesn't, I will also try here Cocoon and, and uh, this. But this this uh, light, it, it looks like a really fun uh, editor Where, uh, and really it works really well in its default configuration. Uh, maybe you need to install a couple of like these scale plugins and stuff like that. But it's uh, what I'm getting to is you don't really have to set that much up to, to make use of it. While at the same time, you can uh, rise and configure it in 
so many ways uh, it's almost unlimited it's uh, it's very much like awesome so i think that if you are using awesome window manager or sublime text editor uh, then this is something that you will understand if you don't it might be look look a bit weird maybe but it is a uh, I, I wish I didn't. I, I, the thing is, I don't, I, I, I don't wish that they implemented multiple cursors. Instead, I, I more wish that I didn't uh, want multiple cursors, that I had never used it. And then this would be such a great editor. It's a really good editor for, for just, uh, yeah, just a, like a replacement for, for example, Nano or something like that. It doesn't have any fancy feature, no modal editing, not, nothing like that. But I know that some of these plugins actually, I shouldn't say no fancy features because you can get um, like uh, quite advanced linters uh, with this. I don't know how I missed that here. Here you see lint plus here for example if you install linter and lint plus then you can get like error messages in line in the text editor and stuff like that it doesn't have lsp but uh, to me that's that's uh, that's just a good thing and it doesn't have linters or anything installed by default it's something you have to configure uh, if in when you know that you need it and stuff like that you know so this editor has huge uh, potential and I really hope it will thrive. I will now uh, write my, my reply here on, on my, my opinions about uh, the, uh, the project management because there are things I would like to, uh, or things uh, that could, be have, could have been done uh, slightly different and so there are definitely room for improvements. But at the same time, this project management works really well. Now we only have one project open, but you can create more projects like uh, if we close light Excel here um, and then we open it with a different directory here. So not sure where am I now really? Yeah, in the config directory. So let's let's open Mondo. Now we have a Mondo project. We can open some files here. Looks great. And then um, if I wanted to, I can switch project here. Uh, change project folder. And here you can see now it's called project folder and also project. It, it, I don't know the, the the wording and the lingo here is a bit confusing to be honest, but whatever. And there we can see we have light Excel as our as another project. And we also have that first project we open home bud. But if we open light Excel, instantly switch to that project instead with those files and stuff like that working with projects that's a, that's a workflow that I hear very little about or see not see that often uh, on like rising YouTube stuff and, and people who claim to be text editor experts whatever you know but projects uh, getting used to working with projects is a uh, very comfortable thing uh, that I highly recommend everyone trying out and sublime has the best uh, project management there there's no no arguing about that uh, but light here it has it built in it is just started uh, it is partially because of me because I opened uh, the issue here about complex projects uh, and it can get a lot better and even uh, this is my reasoning now. I don't want to make any promises, uh, but uh, I kind of feel that I will keep Light installed. I will keep on using it no matter which editor I choose. But uh, uh, I, I I can definitely see myself being like uh, helping out with this uh, project and and maybe con contribute because now when I have looked into to the modules and the core core modules and stuff here a bit more. Yeah, I guess this is good also. This is the config uh, uh, module in core. These are actually uh, com uh, config settings that you can change. You could copy these into your init Lua and uh, change these things as well. So yeah, I guess you see what it is. 
these are these are the only settings you can set uh, by default and that's also good that it's not like an insane amount of different preferences and settings you have to figure out what are, what are these doing blah 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 here we can see that max project files uh, it's set to 2000 meaning that it cannot it will not index larger projects um, I haven't stress tested it uh, or what to call it uh, that much but uh, I have one file um, in my home directory called uh, lots of links dot html and that's 100,000 lines of uh, html here and that opened in an instant it opened really fast it's not the most complicated text file because that matters as well uh, but I tried to open this in, in different editors and it's very fast here. Uh, now we don't have any syntax highlighting, uh, but we actually do have syntax highlighting. It's just my stupid color scheme here that doesn't highlight anything. But uh, that, that doesn't matter. I noticed that even if I have uh, an advanced color scheme, it uh, still opens that file really fast. Maybe we could try here with summer. God damn it, now we have to uh, user module save there. Lots of links, can close it. Open lots of links. There, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's very smooth um, rendering the graphics and stuff like that. It's this is a great editor it's 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 a little gem actually uh, among editors uh, it looks nice it's fast it's very light in all uh, senses it's very extendable it's really really nice and i really hope that it will um, um, get better and stay alive for a long time uh, but I'm not sure it will be my main editor. Um, it's a little bit... Uh, I, or, you know what, I don't want to say any negative things about it. Because um, this is a great editor. Uh, but I want to try a couple of other ones before I, I set on one. But I, I could see myself using this... Uh, I think I'd rather do this, use this uh, with its flaws than you uh, than paying $80 uh, every three years for Sublime for a program where I cannot uh, even change the things that annoys me because it's closed source and I also have to pay for it. So uh, this is higher on the list than Sublime is. Uh, and that's a, that, that's a great start in this uh, 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 the big text editor search and you know even if it would get unmaintained it's still open source and if no one else does it then i guess i will <laughs> maintain it then uh, so uh, the, this is future proof uh, i am sure i understand the source at least the lua part uh, because it's like uh, one part c one part c plus plus and one part lua basically here and this C++ part, that is that AGG rendering thing. Uh, so it's uh, it's not much C code at all uh, compared to the Lua side. And yeah, it's it's definitely not impossible to to uh, main, maintain this and get an overview. It's also, since it's a new uh, young project, it's also a good project to jump into. If you want to contribute to, to a project, this is a project that is uh, well worth that. And uh, for example, documentation, more documentation could be written. Um, and at the moment, at least, uh, most documentation applies to both Light and Light Excel. So you can kind of contribute to two projects at the same time if you want to like to do that. A package manager could be written that could work for both of them. And there, there, there is uh, lots of room for uh, easy contributions are a good starting project i would say uh, but who knows both light and light excel here they are almost all commits are from franco for light excel and and uh, rxi for light so so it's uh, 
uh, it's almost like like a one man project at, at, at the moment and uh, when I opened this issue uh, the first time here, I tried this out to see I opened the issue on December 18 So that's when I first tried this light Excel uh, And I, I think I said something like uh, I I I'm not sure how what what you think about this But I thought maybe I could hack a bit on this uh, myself I don't know but I got like a reply that hey, maybe uh, I can try to do it myself instead you, you know that that kind of uh, 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 Yeah, so it, it's not like they are begging for help uh, if we uh, s say it like that but uh, uh, they they still want input and, and filing issues is always uh, one of the best ways to, to to contribute to a project if the issues are good yeah uh, first impression long video here about light xl uh, i think i will like very soon here now like today as uh, try out cocoon uh, and, and play around with that and get a first impression there kind of thing and then i do the same with this and then i think i will go back and forth between these editors uh, for a while and see uh, which one will stick it also feels like i tried this december 18 it's now uh, two months later and it feels a lot better than it did then but already here I really like it here I think I even say so in this comment that uh, this is actually uh, making me consider uh, switching away from Sublime one thing that was holding me back from doing so uh, was that uh, you know light when I saw this, I was like, yeah, this is this is almost close to being sublime, you know. It just needs a couple of more features and improvements here and there and stuff. But I was like, why would I switch to an editor just to implement the same features that I already got working in a different editor? That's, that's kind of a crazy thing to do. And it is kind of a crazy thing to do. But now it isn't really anymore since... Uh, now my reasoning for using Sublime is also, it's not just that it is closed source, it is they are changing their license model, I really want to switch editor, and then there is nothing wrong, wrong to try to bring uh, the good stuff from my last editor into the next one, I, I don't think so, but you have to kind of uh, uh, think everything like that over, like I don't I will not start trying to implement multiple cursors here, day one here, uh, but I might do that one day, who knows. Who knows, maybe there even is an, is an issue here about that, I don't know. No. Whatever. Um, have a great day, everybody. Bye.